Martyrial hope. What should characterize our existence as consecrated women is the certainty that our lives are already given and that our existences are anchored in a future that we do not possess, one that we so often feel to be distant and that we may even doubt, but that is already given. Because our lives are anchored there, we can make this change of direction that leads us to decentralize and not to worry about selves, and to take care of others and their hopes, take care of the mission DI. The young Eddie Hilversum affirmed this with a striking image in one of the letters written from the barracks of a Nazi concentration camp for Dutch Jews awaiting deportation and extermination. When the spider spins its web, does it not first outline the main threads by which it then ascends itself? The main artery of my life already goes ahead of me and has entered another world. It is as if everything that is happening and is about to happen has already melted into my being. I have assimilated it, I have survived it, and I am already building the new society that will come after this one. Contemplating his heart leads us to look at the world with active hope. The main artery of my life is already ahead of me and has entered another world. That's what it means to have already given up one's life, to the last drop. And then, there is nothing left to lose. There are no reserved depths hidden somewhere in our existence that make love trembling and insecure in case something affects them in case they are expropriated or we lose them, in case they are devalued or stolen. It is a matter of putting life at stake in order to give life, and this can only be done at the cost of one's own life. To live not only costs life, but the only way for the other person to live is through my willingness to give him or her my life. Our commitment to hope will necessarily involve letting go, letting go of securities, letting go of certainties, also letting go of small hopes frail hopes, but also letting go of carefulness. Especially when this carefulness is directed at selves, survival at any price has never been a sign of a Christian, quite the contrary. Jesus' concern was never how to preserve his life, but how to lose it, that is to say, to give it. How to make it reach others, even if to do so he had to lose it, in other words, our fundamental concern cannot be how we preserve selves as an institute, as a congregation, etc., but how to lose our life, in order to give our life, how to give all that we have left, in what we have to give. We know that our hope is not for selves. If we have it, we have it for those who are without hope, and their service we are called to exercise it, like Christ, giving his life for the redemption of many. This is how hope is confirmed, and for this reason martyrdom will be the paradigmatic place of this confirmation, reviving the example and the love of Christ, and also his hope. There is however, a martyrdom that is not always bloody, and that accompanies the life of faith, energizing it with hope. It is the martyrdom of hope in daily life. This type of martyr is also a witness of faith, and a hidden witness of the small great hope. For this reason, they can be a witness of love, because only from gratuitous and unconditional love is it possible to sustain the testimony of hope with the small dying of each day, with those drop by drop losses that lack any heroic stamp, that spontaneously generate neither admiration or recognition, that rather seem to leave us cornered in the space of the unskilled, not very bright, not very clever, the fools and losers. This martyrdom fits exactly the dimensions of the everyday, step by step, drop by drop, everything that must be started again and again every morning, that must be continually embraced, in spite of myself, ruminating, discerning, facing, the small renunciations of each day, each act of abnegation that implies recognizing the other and giving up what is mine so that the other can be and can pass ahead of me, to permit changes that I do not want, and accept when the changes that do want do not occur, and to keep on waiting, in spite of the daily frustration or disappointment. To wait for what does not come, and to welcome what was not expected, 
To support, however, the modification that someone else proposed and that may prove to be effective, and to propose it again quietly, without resentment, maintaining hope and celebrating with sincere joy every step, a holiness without noise, not negligent, but rather one of surrender. A surrender that is excessive, hidden surrender, a martyr's surrender, hopeful, so that others may have life and have it in abundance. We never speak of these martyrs, for it is in the patience of daily life that they have been shedding their blood. But they are the ones who, putting hope in the love in which their existence is rooted, become imitators of Christ in the small things, and turn out to be the best agents of hope for others because their great daring has been to choose to be martyrs of hope. I would like to end with the witness of a martyr, one of the Trappist frères killed in Algeria, protagonist of the film of Gods and Men. It is a fragment of a text written for the Holy Triduum two years before, becoming, through blood martyrdom, an authentic witness of hope, but in which he addresses the question of the martyrdom of daily hope. We know from experience that we often struggle with the small things, especially when they have to be repeated every day. We have given our heart to God on a grand scale, but it's harder for us that He takes it through smaller things. From the depths of silence, fear, suffering, persecution, or daily dying, hope sunrise, living as the cry of the witness, of the martyr, from generation to generation, making its way through history, encouraging our waiting, sustaining us in patience, transmitting the truth of hope, pointing towards its light, which is always in the other, in other. An invitation to return to the first love from which everything springs and to live with that faith, which is absolute trust in the one we recognize as the Lord of our life, and with a hope that consists simply in living dependent on him, sustained by the thread from on high. A call to open selves to the light that he gives us, to learn to look at reality as he sees it, with his eyes, with his perspective, with the surprise of dawn from the darkness of every night. Objectively speaking, nothing will have changed, but how different everything came. Failure, loss, and frustration reflect such a different light when they are nourished by life given for others, by a commitment at great stakes, by hope given as a gift. Perhaps this is not the only way, but I can't help believing that this is the way we will be able to enter into our complex history as small lights that make hope shine. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Here are some questions that may help you reflect and then share in community. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. Think about the daily places that call for this kind of hope dot 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 in community relationships, in the mission, in the small things. Which one would I like to share? We share in community by means of the listening circles.